morning, Miss Go Electric here. Today is Sunday, November 9th, 2025, and this is The Current, your weekly EV news in about 10 minutes. Several EV makers held their earnings calls and investor events this week, so let's go over some of the notable highlights. Rivian exceeded Wall Street expectations in its third quarter 2025 earnings report, marking its second quarterly gross profit of the year and signaling steady progress towards profitability. The company reported revenue of $1.56 billion, a 78% surge from the prior year, and topping forecasts of $1.52 billion, fueled by 13,201 vehicle deliveries, a 32% increase year over year. Gross profit reached to positive positive $24 million, bolstered by a $154 million boost, mostly from its joint venture with Volkswagen on software and services, which offset a $130 million automotive segment loss. CEO RJ Scaringe highlighted advancements on the upcoming R2 SUV like bi-directional charging, with production set to start in early 2026, and confirmed their upcoming Autonomy and AI Day event on December 11th to showcase technology investments. Rivian affirmed its full-year 2025 guidance of 41,500 to 43,500 vehicle production. As Rivian navigates post-tax credit expiration challenges, Scringe emphasized cost efficiencies and the VW partnership as keys to scaling production and capturing mass market share. After the earnings call, the company shared details on the CEO's new performance-based pay package, which could be potentially worth up to $5 billion if goals are met. The award grants Scaringe options to purchase up to 36.5 million shares of Rivian Class A stock at $15.22 per share, about 16 million more than his previous 2021 grant, which the company scrapped due to unattainable targets set during the COVID pandemic. For context, the the share count represents less than 2% of the company's available supply. Vesting begins only if Rivian's market value surges by at least $32 billion, with full realization requiring shareholders to capture $153 billion in value, potentially boosting the stock from its current $15.23 close to as high as $140, a roughly 820% increase. Unlike the Tesla target, which exceeds Tesla's all-time highs for the company and the highest valuations of any company in human history, RJ's targets are well below stock prices, which have already been achieved by Rivian, which peaked at $179 per share. Scaringe's base salary will also double to $2 million annually, and he gains a 10% stake in Rivian's new spin-off, Mind Robotics, which focuses on AI for manufacturing efficiency. Tesla shareholders overwhelmingly approved a groundbreaking performance-based CEO compensation package worth up to $1 trillion during the company's 2025 annual shareholder meeting. The 12-tranche stock grant is tied to ambitious milestones, including market capitalization growth of nearly 1,000% to $10 trillion and operational feats in energy storage and robotics. With Musk's 13.5% stake and loyal retail investor returns in mind, the package passed handily, potentially dwarfing his 2018 deal that ballooned to $878 billion amid Tesla's surge to a $1.2 trillion valuation by September of 2025. Other key highlights included updates on the CyberCab RoboTaxi, with volume production slated for April of 2026 and a production rate of one vehicle every 10 seconds with their new unboxed manufacturing approach. During the Q&A portion, Elon said that texting and driving should be possible in FSD vehicles in a month or two. Every U.S. state except for Montana has explicitly banned texting for all drivers. Even if Tesla has technically enabled the behavior, Behavior, it's unclear how it can be done lawfully. Musk also said the production intent version of the long-awaited next-generation Roadster would be demonstrated April 1st, with production kicking off 12 to 18 months from that point, about 10 years after its 2017 debut. The meeting also revealed progress on the Tesla Semi with a new front fascia and headlamp design. The company is targeting 50,000 units annually by 2027.
Lucid Motors showcased growth in its third quarter earnings call, reporting a seventh straight quarter of record vehicle deliveries. Interim CEO Mark Winterhoff highlighted production of 3,891 vehicles, a 116% increase from Q3 of 2024, alongside 4,078 deliveries, up 47% year over year, driven by U.S. sales and over 1,000 units, more than a quarter of the total production was shipped to Saudi Arabia for local assembly. The company has revised its guidance to about 18,000 vehicles for 2025 from its previous 18 to 20,000 units. Lucid's largest shareholder, Saudi Arabia's Public Investment Fund, expanded a delay draw term loan from $750 million to $2 billion, pushing pro forma cash to $5.5 billion from $4.2 2 billion at quarter end. These funds are expected to keep the company operating into the first half of 2027. In a major leadership shakeup, Lucid confirmed the departure of longtime chief engineer Eric Bach, Lucid's VP of Engineering James Hawkins, and Vice President of Quality Jerry Ford, who is retiring. Bach and Ford had been with the company for over 10 years. Ahmad Dalala will see his second promotion this year with the appointment to Senior Vice President, Engineering and Digital to take over responsibilities from Bach. As we accelerate production of Lucid Gravity and prepare to launch our mid-size platform, these changes will help drive faster innovation and stronger execution, said Mark Winterhoff, interim CEO at Lucid. The Gravity Touring with a lower price trim is expected to begin deliveries next month. Electric racing is about to get a whole lot faster. This week, the FIA and Formula E unveiled their new Gen 4 powertrain that will level up the performance by 50% from the previous generation. Debuting at the end of next year in the 2026-27 ABB FIA Formula E World Championship, the new Gen 4 car delivers 600 kilowatts or over 815 horsepower in attack mode. The new cars will include active all-wheel drive across every lap, and regenerative braking up to 700 kilowatts. Standard race output in Gen 4 will climb to 450 kilowatts from Gen 3's 350 kilowatts. Not only has the power increased, but the battery capacity has too. The battery increases from 38.5 kilowatt hours of usable capacity to 55 kilowatt hours to support the performance demands and new chassis. Current Gen 3 Evo cars are set to line up for season 12 of the ABB FIA Formula E World Championship, which kicks off in Brazil on December 5th. They are already proven to have quicker off-the-line performance than Formula One cars, but we will just have to wait and see what the next generation can do one year from now. These technology advances from electric racing are not just limited to the track. Porsche's new electric Cayenne draws directly from Formula E's efficiency-focused energy recovery and has 600 kilowatts of recuperation power, matching the Porsche 99X electric race car's peak output. Formula E is our development lab for the electromobility of tomorrow. This is where we gain valuable insights for our road-going sports cars, says Dr. Michael Steiner, member of the Board of Management and Research and Development. The new Cayenne Electric shows how quickly such a technology transfer takes place at Porsche and how relevant our commitment to the electric racing series is to series production. If you'd like to learn more about Formula E, I'll include a link to our series and event explainer video in the description below. Bring on more efficient and powerful electric racing. Several companies developing electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicles, also known as eVTOLs, have been making headlines this week as vertical electric flight progresses closer to reality. California-based Stellantis and United-backed Archer Aviation has acquired control of Hawthorne Municipal Airport, a prime 80-acre general aviation facility just three miles from Los Angeles International Airport. The property was acquired in a $126 million cash deal announced Thursday, alongside its third quarter earnings. The purchase, funded in part by a fresh $650 million equity raise that boosts Archer's liquidity to over $2 billion 
million positions the site as the operational nerve center for Archer's planned Los Angeles air taxi network, with a starring role in the 2028 Summer Olympics. Spanning 190,000 square feet of terminals, offices, and hangars, the airport will double as a testbed for Archer's AI-driven aviation tech, including air traffic and ground operation tools developed with partners like United Airlines. Archer reported a narrower-than-expected Q3 net loss of $129.9 million, down from analyst forecasts of $178.6 million, and highlighted recent milestones like a 55-mile midnight eVTOL test flight at 126 miles per hour and the acquisition of over 300 patents from now-defunct Lilium. The deal, pending final closing conditions, underscores Archer's work towards FAA certification and commercial operations by 2026. Vermont-based and Amazon-backed beta technologies marked a milestone this week, raising over a billion dollars in an initial public offering that values the company at approximately $7.4 billion. For reference, that is almost 50% more than the current valuation of Lucid Motors. Shares debuted on the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker BETA on November 4th. Founded in 2017 by CEO Kyle Clark, Beta has flown its electric aircraft more than 83,000 nautical miles, including cross-country hauls, while building a network of over 50 charging stations across the U.S. and Canada. The company secured $1.5 billion in prior private funding. Proceeds from the upsized IPO will fuel certification efforts for commercial service that was expected before the end of this year. Toyota and Delta-backed Joby Aviation has entered the final phase of FAA certification testing, bringing its eVTOL aircraft one step closer to real-world flights. The certification breakthrough came on November 5th, when Joby powered on its first fully conforming aircraft for type inspection authorization testing, which is the culminating stage of the FAA's rigorous type certification process. This milestone allows the company to conduct thousands of hardware and software integration tests ahead of four credit flight trials with FAA pilots expected in 2026. This is the moment where our intended type design, manufacturing process, and certification strategy converge into one physical asset, said Didier Papadopoulos, Joby's president of Aircraft OEM. It validates that we can design a safe aircraft and produce it reliably. This first testing step is one of the most important milestones in Joby's history to date and puts us closer than ever to achieving FAA certification. Data from these tests will inform the FAA's decision on issuing a type certification, which essentially provides the green light for commercial passenger operations. We are inching closer and closer to electric flight. Do you see yourself trying out an eVTOL in the coming years? This week, I had the pleasure of riding and reviewing the impressive AMZ Cycles Paladin XC carbon fiber electric mountain bike through the beautiful fall colors in Tennessee. Even if you aren't in the market for a low-cost mid-drive hardtail ripper, you might enjoy the scenery. You can find a link to my detailed review and more details about each story in this episode in this video's description. These have been our top EV news stories for this week. We hope you'll consider subscribing and sharing this video online so we can continue producing this show among the other videos that we create here. Thank you for watching and until next time, drive, fly, ride. Go electric.